the DuPont Company brings you Diamonds in the Sky, starring June Lockhart, together with her mother and father, Kathleen and Jean Lockhart, on the Cavalcade of America. Diamonds in the Sky, starring the Lockhart family with Kathleen as Mariah Mitchell, June as Gladys Susan, and Jean as Mr. Motes on the Cavalcade of America. Young ladies of Vassar College, this is the very last time I shall stand on this platform and speak to you, as I have done so many times in the past 23 years. It is another century, and the voice is that of Mariah Mitchell, America's first great woman astronomer, whom Lincoln called an important American natural resource. She is addressing the students at Vassar College the day she retires from the faculty. I leave here with something less than elation. I've loved being one of you. Love being one of you, although there was a time. It was back when I was a mere slip of a girl. A mere slip of a girl of 47. <laughs> I was in the observatory in the backyard of my home in Lynn, Massachusetts. It was a lovely, cloudless, moonless night in summer of 1865. And I, I remember I was examining two nebulae in Leo through the telescope. Mitchell, Dr. Sanderson. Dr. Sanderson. Now, am I disturbing you? Oh, no, no, not at all. Come in, come in. So this is the famous observatory. Well, it's where I work. But why didn't you let me know you were coming? I wanted to surprise you. I'm flattered you thought of coming to see me. It's really quite a trip. Yes, and I came on a very special mission. The students, faculty, and alumni of Vassar want you back. And I'd better warn you, they have sent me with instructions to bowl you over. And I'd better warn you, Doctor, that I don't bowl over very easily. I'm content and busy here. I'm sure Vassar can struggle along without me, but do sit down, Doctor. Oh, thank you. But, Miss Mitchell, I assure you, you would have your observatory at the college, too. Time to continue your researches and more money than you could ever earn by writing. Uh, why won't you come? I must take your point scientifically, Doctor. Point one... I have enough money. Uh, but I mean for clothes or hats or whatever women... Oh, everything I own is so ugly and I'm so ditto that a few dollars more or less couldn't make me look better even in a storm. Point two, Doctor? Well, the good you could do toward furthering the education of women. No, Doctor. Suppose you suggest a professorship at a men's college. I could do something for women's education if that's what you're offering me. I'd teach men how to boil their own breakfast eggs, for instance, and a few other things. Point three, Doctor? <coughs> I fear I am not bowling you over. Yes, who is it? Miss Mitchell. It's Mrs. Remsen here and Mrs. Moe. Oh, Mrs. Remsen and Mrs. Moe. Well, ladies, please come in. Oh, thank you, Miss Mitchell. Dear, oh, oh my goodness, I didn't know you had a visitor. I'm so sorry if we are disturbing you, Miss Mitchell. Ladies, this is Dr. Sanderson. Uh, Mrs. Remsen, Mrs. Moe's doctor, How two of my neighbors. Mrs. Remsen, Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Mitchell, we'll only stay a minute. Yes, it's about a horoscope, Miss Mitchell. A horoscope? Yes, you see, well, you remember my daughter. And my son, Sam. Maybe you never met him. They got married a year or so ago, and they've just had a baby. It's a girl, and they've named her after us. Gladys Susan Moe. Gladys for me. And Susan for me. Isn't that sweet? Well, congratulations, ladies. I hope you'll send her to Vassar when she's old enough. <laughs> oh, thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Congratulations to both of you. But did I hear you say something about a horoscope? Yes, we have the information here. Two minutes past nine on the night of the twelfth. In Hartford, Connecticut, in case the stars are different there. You two ladies, you really think that what I do in this observatory is cast horoscope? Oh, no. No, we've heard that you do lots of other things, too. Discover stars and all, but we thought... Of course, if you're too busy, my dear. Busy? Oh, not at all, not at all. So you want a horoscope. Very well. <clears throat> On the night of the 12th, Venus and Mercury were almost directly over Hartford, Connecticut. Saturn 
Wilson was casting a malignant influence on Virgo, and precisely the moment the two-faced twins... No, 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 I'm wrong. Wait a minute. And at precisely the moment Gladys Susan was born, Aries the goat had cornered Gemini, the two-faced twins, and was butting them both in a frightfully delicate spot. Oh, oh, oh. ladies, I'm sorry to tell you that never in history has there been such gross indecorum in the heavens. No. Oh, my goodness. And, well, you might drop that oath, Mrs. Ramson, for that moment will be known down through the ages as the Bachelor Ball of Infinity, the Saturday night of the cosmos, the stag party of the Zodiac. Oh, my! Oh, my! Then, the little bride is Susan. Exactly, Mrs. Most. Ladies, I very much fear that by the time your granddaughter is old enough to enter Vassa, yes? her reputation in the community will be such... That Vassar will not have her at all. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, poor little Gladys Susan. Now, what shall we do? Ladies, there is one way out. Yes, yes. What is it? Yes, what is it? Hurry home. Hurry home and go down on your knees and pray for a spark of intelligence. Pray and pray. And then perhaps you will understand that God put all human creatures on this earth with a free will to do with their lives what they wish. He made you free of the influence of the stars so that you might stay free and not be tyrannized ever. Ladies, I wish you an irritable good night. But I don't understand. I wish you good night. You mean you don't believe in astrology? Is that what you... Precisely, Mrs. Moat. And now, if you'll excuse us, Dr. Sanderson and I have some palm reading to do. Well, I never... Me? I've never been so insulted... Oh, Dr. Sanderson, I apologize to you for my flare-up and their stupidity. Apologize? I enjoyed it immensely. And to think, and to think that I was sent here to bowl you over. Doctor, I have a message for Vassar to be good enough to take it. Yes? What is it? I think now that perhaps female education in this country needs every ally it can get. Doctor, you may report to the faculty that I have been bowled over. Very thoroughly bold. I accept. Just a minute, please. Well, young lady, um, Miss Mitchell? Yes? Uh, my name is Moat. Moat? Gladys Moat. Gladys Susan Moat of uh, Hartford, Connecticut, Miss Mitchell. Gladys Susan Moat. Why, you're all grown up. Uh, please come in. Forgive all this disorder. I've been trying to finish some experiments before the new term begins at Bath on Monday, you know. Uh, sit there, child. Put the books on the floor. Thank you. Well, well, that is Susan most. <laughs> you're a pretty wide-eyed little thing. And you're... you're wonderful looking. Oh. You, well, you know, you've been about the most important thing in my life. Oh, and what you did to my grandmother's 18 years ago. They talked about it until I know the story by heart. Then as I grew older, I, I began to hear more and more about you, and I became interested in astronomy. You're sure you mean astronomy and not astrology? Oh, I read Herschel and Bridges' conic sections and, and Hutton's mathematics, and... Did you understand them? Well, I, I, uh, I read them from cover to cover. But did you understand them? <laughs> Hardly. Hardly one single word. Oh, but I wanted to. I wanted to so hard. I want to understand everything. Ah, now that, Gladys, that was spoken like a true student. I hope you'll take my course when you're at Vassar. I'd give anything to study under you, Miss Mitchell, but, well, that's just it. I'm not coming to Vassar. You're not? No, they want to send me to cooking school. Oh, oh, excuse me. I, I took it for granted if you were here. Well, I want to go to Vassar. I, I want to terribly, but... Well, Mother died almost ten years ago, and Daddy... Well, he's sweet, but... Well, he doesn't believe in education for women. And, of course, my grandmothers don't. That... Well, that's what I meant when I said that you were about the most important thing in my life. I begin to see. Your family hates me. <laughs> and with typical logic assumes that because I'm educated, it must be the education that makes me hateful. Poor Gladys Susan... A stupid, heedless prank of mine 18 years ago, and I've cost you an education. Oh, child, how can I ever make it up to you? Well, I, I did think perhaps... Well, it seemed to me that anyone who could discover a comet ought to be able to convince old Dad. Convince old Dad? Oh, Gladys. 
I want to help you, but here I am, a traditional family enemy. The minute you mention my name, you'll disagree with me. Before I said boo, I'm everything in the world he doesn't want you to become. Then you, you, you mean you won't come home with me and, and talk to Daddy? Oh, please, Miss Mitchell. Well, child, I, I suppose I owe it to you to try. Where did you say you live? Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, can Oh, of course, right under the stag party of the Zodiac. <laughs> well, well, Gladys Susan, I'll do my best. There, Miss Mitchell, the big grey house, that's that. I don't know what I'm going to say. What will your father do when he knows who I am? Well, I, I, I thought I wouldn't tell him who you are at first. You said yourself as soon as he hears your name that... But he'll... how are you going to introduce me? Well, as, uh, as our new housekeeper. Housekeeper? Gladys, are you mad? Well, you see, Daddy sent me to pick up a new housekeeper. He's, he's written her letters and everything, but, but he's never seen her. So why couldn't you be Minerva Higginbottom? Just until, well, just until we can catch him in a good mood. Minerva Higginbottom. Yes, I think you're out of your mind. I've not lived 65 years to become something called Minerva Higginbottom. Ooh, order! Here we are, ladies. Here we are indeed. Where are we? Well, well, well. Um, you're late for getting back, ladies. Uh, uh, hello, Daddy. Uh, Daddy, this is... Yes, 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 yes. Miss Higginbottom, of course. How do you do, Miss Higginbottom? Uh, Miss Higginbottom, is anything the matter? I said, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Motes, sir? You are listening to Kathleen, June, and Jean Lockhart in Diamonds in the Sky. On the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Tonight we are bringing you a story about Mariah Mitchell, the celebrated American astronomer and educator of the 19th century. Mariah has been induced by young Gladys Motes to come to her house and act as housekeeper so that she might get a chance to persuade Gladys' father to send her to Vassar College where Mariah is teaching. We continue as Mariah is being shown to her room. Well, well, now, um, this is a nice little room, isn't it, Miss Higginbottom? Yes, yes, it is, Mr. Motes. What are my duties? Her duties? Well, up at six, make the fire, brew some coffee, make some bread, have breakfast ready sharply at seven. After that, trim lamps, put up the house, and then uh, Gladys here will help you with the tatting, sewing, and darning. Oh, wait uh, a minute. I thought this job was housekeeper. To me, a housekeeper is someone who's in charge of the other person. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I found that calling the job housekeeper gets me a better class of maid. <laughs> I, I hope you don't object to work, Miss Higginbottom. I said, I hope you don't mind work, do you? Minerva, Daddy's asking you a question. I believe in women doing plenty of housework. You mean it keeps their foolish little hands out of trouble? Precisely. Remember, Minerva, I'll be helping you all the time. Yes, and that's the main thing. I expect you to educate my daughter. That's why I'm willing to pay you $7 a week and board. Educate? Educate in the only things that's proper for a woman to know. Oh. Cooking, uh, sewing, housework, uh, plus some little artistic accomplishment and... Uh, well, well, Miss Higginbottom, is anything the matter? You're quite red in the face. Miss Higginbottom, is Some the... little artistic accomplishment. Don't you think that's superfluous? Not at all. Not at all. I believe very strongly that it's woman's duty to bring beauty into a man's life. After dinner, when he has his slippers on, she can play piano or sing or something like that. Oh, she's not a complete woman if she can't dash off a minuet after giving him a good dinner. I... I hope you agree, Miss Higginbottom. Don't you think, sir, 
It's physically possible for a woman to be tone deaf? Well, I suppose it could happen. I never heard of it, but I suppose it could happen. Well, then, uh, would she still have to sing? Oh, oh no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be very good to listen to then, would it? <laughs> uh, no, indeed. Uh, she could do, well, a pretty thing. You know, bright pieces of string. And, uh, I like colors myself. Uh, embroidery, you know, provide relaxing beauty for her husband. That's the main thing. Do you think it would hurt her husband's comfort terribly if she could read a book or discuss the affairs of the world with him? My dear madam, there just isn't room in the little female brain for cooking, sewing, piano, and book learning. There just isn't room. Well, now, I'll let you get settled. Dinner at six, two guests. Two guests? Who, Daddy? Oh, uh, well, I thought I'd told you. Your two grandmothers are coming down for the weekend. Grandma Moats and Grandma Ramps. Well, see you at dinner. Well, Mother, now how about some more of this pudding? Oh, I couldn't. I just couldn't. Uh, well, how about you, Grandma Remsen? I couldn't eat another mouthful, Sam, and I do think your new housekeeper's a jewel, mm. Sam. Just a jewel. <laughs> well, I, I must say, uh, that's as good a dinner as was ever set before a king. Uh, I... I wonder why she wouldn't serve it, though. She, uh, she said she'd be embarrassed, and I didn't mind carrying it in. Well, good cook or not, I do think she might serve for what you're paying us. Seven dollars a week and won't leave her kitchen. <laughs> the idea. Yes, yeah, seven dollars. Uh, by heaven, I, I think you're right, Mother. Uh, Gladys, ask Miss Higginbottom to come in. Anyway, I, I want to compliment her on the dinner. Oh, I, I don't think she will, Daddy. She, she's shy. Shy? Well, I'll see you about that. Oh, Daddy, please sit down. Why? Well, what's this? Why, she, she has the kitchen door locked. Miss Higginbottom? Miss Higginbottom, open up. Now, what is it you're wanting? Why, well, why, she didn't have an accent two hours ago. Oh, it, it comes and goes. Miss Higginbottom, I will not be locked out of my own kitchen. Well, I never heard of such a thing. And maybe she's what they call a character. Are you seeing it's not for your liking? The dinner was fine, but you open that door or I'll break it down. All right, I'm coming. Oh, Daddy. What can I do for you? <gasps> Mariah Mitchell. What? No, why, that's Minerva Higginbottom. Minerva Higginbottom, indeed, that's Mariah Mitchell. How do you do, Mrs. Remsen and Mrs. Moat? I believe you were going to compliment me on my dinner. I listened to it just as cool as you please. Oh, Miss Mitchell, I'm so sorry. Daddy, it's all my fault. I pleaded with her to come. Uh, you, you mean Miss Higginbottom really is Mariah Mitchell, the, the scientist and basser? Oh, I, I apologize for the deception, uh. sir. I came to try to convince you that your daughter deserves an education. This masquerade, uh, I'm afraid it just happened. I thought that if I cooked a good dinner, it might dissuade you from your belief that only women with no education could shove a roast in the oven. I'm sorry. Of course, I'll be on the first train in the morning. Miss Mitchell, for a woman of your standing to come here this way, it's, uh, it's very generous. I only wish, frankly, that I... Well, I, I wish you could convince me. Uh, it's, it's no pleasure to me, ma'am, to deny my daughter her heart's desire. Uh, let me ask you, Miss Mitchell, can you play the piano? Unfortunately, sir, I am tone deaf. Well, uh, can you do embroidery, that sort of thing? I can turn a hem, Mr. Moat. I'm afraid fancy sewing always bored me. Hmm. Well, madam, your honesty becomes you, but I'm afraid your answer is just what I expected. I think under the circumstances, we'd better say good night. Miss Mitchell, we'll be honored to have you stay with us. Gladys, Miss Mitchell will share your bedroom. And now, good evening, ladies. Mr. Moat, you're being very kind. But uh, before we say good night, I'd like to apologize. No, 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 no. I apologize to you, madam. We know better how to entertain distinguished guests. And uh, incidentally, I believe I owe you a day's wages. I'll send a check for one dollar to your favorite charity. <laughs> if you don't mind. That's the hardest dollar I ever earned in my life. I would like it myself. And in cash. Shh, please, Miss Mitchell. We're standing right over Daddy's bedroom. What would he think if he found us on the roof at this time of night? Why, the whole household's been asleep for hours. <laughs> it, would, 
It would probably confirm your father's belief that I'm mad as a march. <laughs> Here, this is a good place to set up my telescope. It's such a beautiful little telescope. I carry it everywhere. In the last 30 years, I haven't missed a night's observing, weather permitting. And you know, there's great solace in looking at the stars when one's unhappy. Oh, Gladys, I'm so sorry. I oh, wish you did everything you could. More than anyone could have asked. I, I was an idiot. There. What are you going to look at? Oh, I thought we'd just sweep the heavens and I'd show you some of my friends among the stars. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Daddy's heard us. Who's that up there on the roof? What'll we say? It's uh, Miss Mitchell and Mr. Motes. Your daughter and I are looking at the stars. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm afraid that means he's on his way up here to the roof. He won't punish you, will he? Punish me? You mean whip me? Oh, no. You don't understand, Daddy. He's the kindest thing in the world. Just sort of... Well, just sort of setting his ideas is all. Well, men have been known to change their ideas. Here, 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 here. Now, what's all this about? I'm sorry if we awakened you, Mr. Moat. I haven't been asleep. I've found this a very disturbing evening. I've been praying for guidance. And I'm preparing to do the same with this. Pray through a telescope? I thought scientists didn't believe in God. Oh, not believe in God? Do you think one could look into infinity hour after hour and not believe in God? Well, I've heard that science is an enemy of religion. Enemy? Oh, Mr. Most. It's my belief that every formula which expresses the law of nature is a hymn in praise of God. Why, you... You surprise me, Miss Mitchell, continually, and impress me. Come here. Look through this telescope, please. All right. I'd like to. Uh, I don't... I don't see anything. Wait a moment. Let me adjust it. There. Can you see now? Why? Why, by George. It's a big star. Two stars. You said you liked color. Well, why, one is white. Pure, brilliant white, like a diamond. A pure diamond. And the other... Oh, what a wonderful red. Here. Let me sweep the telescope for you. Look, you talk about beauty being a woman's problem. Oh. What would you say to a wife who could show her husband such a garden of color? Oh. Our language has no words for such delicate differences in shades. Such in George, there, look, two together. A green one and the richest, most beautiful blue. Mr. Mo, if you'll let Gladys come to Vassar, I'll teach her to know her way through God's great and limitless garden. Uh, doesn't it put embroidery and your little bits of colored string to shame? Miss Mitchell, I devoutly wish I could say yes to Gladys and Bassett. Oh, Daddy, please, please do. But Gladys, darling, there are certain practical facts. You, you must marry and husbands can't eat stars. Oh, I'll marry, Daddy. There's time for that later. But the time to prepare for it is now. Please let me go to Vassar, Daddy. Well, Sam, what are you going to say? <clears throat> Grandma Motz. Um, Grandma, now you, you shouldn't be up on the roof and without your nightcap. Come now, the air's chilly. I'll take you below. You will not. Your voice is woke and I decided to come up here to make you settle the argument once and for all and so we can get some sleep. Very well, Grandma. Uh, Miss Mitchell, there's one thought that occurs to me. What is it? Uh, if I should let Gladys go to Vassar... Oh, Daddy, if you I will? I should... Would you undertake to teach her to cook a rib roast the way you did tonight? Mr. Moat, Vassar is not a cooking school. Don't quibble, Miss Mitchell. That was a good roast. No, oh, dear. Think of the rest of the faculty. <laughs> I can hear them now. Mariah Mitchell, Professor of Astronomy, Advanced Mathematics, and Basic. Oh, Miss Mitchell, no one would know. Please, here's my chance. <laughs> oh, Gladys, I was only teasing. Of course I'll do it. Well, oh. that's settled. Now we can go to bed. Uh, Gladys, attend your grandmother. Miss Mitchell, my arm. No, not yet. Not yet, Mr. Most. This is a momentous occasion. Let's flavor it. A child, a woman, is about to receive an education. A whole new world will open for Gladys Susan. Here, let me at that telescope. Miss Mitchell, what are you going to do? I believe she's going to tell Gladys Susan's horoscope. In a manner of speaking, yes. I see for Gladys Susan and thousands of American girls like her a day when they will be freed from the enslavement of the needle in the kitchen, when they'll be proud to cook, to sew, to run their houses. 
but will be proud, too, that they have minds and souls as well as two hands. Minds that through training and education will help make this country and this world a better place to live in. Thank you, Kathleen, June, and Jean Lockhart. Next week, Cavalcade will star Claude Jarman, Jr., whose tender and rewarding performance as Jody at the motion picture The Yearling we'll all remember for many years to come. Our Cavalcade play will be a radio adaptation of Dale Anson's popular story, The Day They Gave Babies Away, the true and heartwarming story of a boy who played Santa Claus to his grown-up neighbors. Be sure to join us then next Monday night at this same time for The Day They Gave Babies Away, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, Diamonds in the Sky was especially written by Luther Davis, author of the MGM screenplay, B.F.'s Daughter. June Lockhart is currently starring in the Broadway success For Love or Money. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Bill Hamilton inviting you to listen next week to The Day They Gave Babies Away, starring Claude Jarman, Jr. on The Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.